In this tutorial, we're going to look at a way that we can handle authentication, that is users logging in and being able to protect certain routes in an Express.js application. And we're going to do that using some middleware with another NPM package called Passport. And Passport does a lot of the heavy lifting in terms of writing the code for us that handles all of the user login and session data. And there are many different ways that you can choose to use Passport for authentication. And Passport calls the method of authenticating with a particular service a strategy, which in simple terms just means how do you want to connect your Node.js application and how should certain situations be handled. And if you go to the Passport.js website, you'll see that there are many different options for these strategies, such as logging with Facebook, Google, Twitter, and lots of other social media platforms. But for this example, we're going to keep it simple and use a strategy called Passport Local which will just look for login information in our local MongoDB database. So building on from the MongoDB app that we created in the previous few lessons, so let's add Passport and Passport Local, plus a couple of other dependencies to this project. And let's import those into our app.js file. So the other two dependencies I installed was the express session package, which you'll have seen in a previous lesson enables us to persist data to a session within express. And the other is connect flash, which is a handy package that we'll use a little later on in the lesson. So we're going to do three things now. The first is we're going to implement the local strategy to look for users in our local MongoDB database. We'll then create the HTML form that will allow the user to log in. And then finally, we'll set up the login routes and also a protected route that can only be accessed once the user has successfully logged in. But before we do that, we need to configure Express to use the new packages that we've imported. So we've just told Express to use the Flash package, set up a session, and also initialize and start the Passport sessions, and finally told it to use the local strategy imported from Passport Local. But we can't just leave it there, we actually need to pass a function into that new local strategy call. And you can think of this as providing instructions to Passport as to how users are authenticated when someone tries to log in, for example. So inside the function, we get access to the username and password that Passport has been provided with. And the auth check done variable is just a name I've given to a callback, which is called once we've either found a user logged in correctly or the login fails for some reason. So up in our MongoDB connection, I'm just actually going to access a new collection called users. And if we head on over to Compass and create that new collection to hold our user data, I'll just create this inside of our blog DB database. And whilst I'm here, I'll create a user so that we can actually have someone to log in with. So let's head back over to our code. And with that collection set up, let's save it into our app.locals. So now we can access it inside of our local strategy. So all we want to do here really is to check for the existence of that user within the user's collection. So if the username provided wasn't found in the database, we need to return a failed login. And we do that by using the callback, which I labeled auth check done and pass in two values, null and false. And this will indicate to Passport that the user authentication has failed at this point. If the user is found, we need to actually validate the password. And if the password that's inside of the user object doesn't match the password that Passport has been given, then again, the authentication has failed. It's worth saying as well that we probably wouldn't hold our user's passwords in plain text with inside the database. So in reality here, we're probably using something from the crypto module to create a hash and comparing those instead. However, if we've got to this point within the strategy, 
Then we know the user has logged in with the right username and password and return that user from the strategy inside the callback. But really all we're doing is making a database request to MongoDB to see if we can find the username that the user has logged in with and checking if the passwords match. And if they do, inside of the callback we return the user object. So before we go on to creating our routes and our HTML form, there's two other functions that we need to set up inside of Passport. And they are Passport's serialize and deserialize user functions. And these two functions are necessary because the data that Express saves with inside of the session is literally held as a string. So in order to persist this user data across sessions, we need to tell Passport how we actually want to save the data and then how we want to decode it afterwards. And these two functions themselves take a function. And for the serialized user function, we actually get the user object that's been passed from Passport and another callback, which I've just labeled done this time. And we call that callback by passing a value of null and then passing the ID of the user, which don't forget starts with an underscore, to be put into the string. The deserialize user function is kind of backwards because we actually get the ID of the user within the session and we just pass that back to the callback as an object with a key of ID. So that's all of the configuration done, you'll be happy to hear. Let's go on to create our login view. So I'm going to keep the login form super simple just for speed. So as you can see, really simple, just two text inputs of username and password. And when the user hits the login button, the form will post this data to the login route. So with that set up, let's actually go ahead and create those routes. So first of all, I'm going to create the routes for the login view and also to handle the post data. So the get route is fairly straightforward, but I've also created a local variable called errors, and the post route has got the passport.authenticate method in there, calling the local strategy that we just created. So this will in effect call the local strategy, and if everything's good, it will go on and move to the redirect, and redirect us to a route called forward slash secret. But if there's any login failures, we'll stay on the login page, and you'll see that working in just a second. And this will just send a bit of text back to the user saying secret area to identify it as our protected route. And the way we protect it is just checking a special value on the request object, but I'm actually going to put this into a function so it can be reused elsewhere. So here I've just created a helper function called ensure authenticated and it checks the request object for a special method called isAuthenticated. And if that returns true, we actually return the next function, which might have been seen being used on all of the other routes that we've created. And it simply means to call the next part of the Express.js routing chain. And in our example, that just means to send the text secret area if the user turns out to be authenticated. But if not, we're actually going to redirect them back to the login page. So that should be pretty much everything we need to do to protect our routes in our Express.js application, so let's fire it up and take a look. Oh, and I just missed one thing there, we need to actually change uh, the app.use to passport.use to ensure Passport is using that as its local strategy. And there we have our very simple login page. So let's actually try and access that secret route just in our browser. As you can see, because we're not logged in, the is authenticated request is failing, so we're redirected straight away back to the login page. Let's try and log in with the credentials in the MongoDB collection. 
And there you can see we get access to the protected route that is protected by the Passport Local Strategy. If we try and log in with a bad username or password combination, you can see we don't actually get access to the secret area, but the error message isn't that helpful. It would be better if we were actually redirected back to the login page with a message as to why we couldn't log in. Luckily, there's just a few configuration changes that we need to enable that, and we'll cover how to do that in the next lesson.